Hey guys, it's Anna. I decided to make this video because of the amount of clueless people that came to PetSmart when I worked there during my six months of employment. Before I start the video, I just want to explain that in no way am I an expert. I just know these things from my life experiences and listening to people and from working with animals specifically. I don't really consider myself a pet enthusiast either. I only have a dog and two rats. We used to have rabbits growing up. These five things are just things that frustrate me that people don't know when they go to get pets. I worked at PetSmart for about six months as a pet care associate where I sold birds, reptiles, small animals, and fish. I also sold the food and habitats, cages, tanks for the animals. I'll get more into my experience with PetSmart in the rest of the video. So thing number one is do your own research. A lot of times when people want a pet, they just go to their local PetSmart or Petco. They pick the animal that they want, go up to an employee, say, I want this, let's say hamster. I want this hamster cage, this hamster food. What else do you think I should get them? Most of the time they get something that's about this big for a hamster that's about this big or they'll get, uh, or they'll completely not even know what they want or what size they should get and they ask the employee. That's perfectly great. Like asking for help is very good. That's part of the reason why the pet care associates are there. Like I was never bothered when people asked me for help, but if you don't know anything, you really can't expect these employees to be experts because let me just break it down for you. I can't talk for other stores, I can't talk for other franchises, but this was my personal experience from being at PetSmart. I don't really have that big of a problem with PetSmart, but my experience from being at PetSmart was I started, they sat me down in front of a computer, I watched videos and read things for three hours, uh, which doesn't seem so bad, but the problem is that they went from tank cycles to forklift safety with the click of a button, and then we'll go back to dog best dog food brands, and when you're a beginner that's only had a dog that hasn't done that much research on like specifics, it was pretty exhausting and confusing and hard to remember. Um, a few days later, uh, they brought me back and I went in the back again and I read a book that was about birds and reptiles and fish and small animals. And again, it was just kind of like, here's the fish section, it is an hour. Like it was pretty much like, felt like about four hours or five hours of reading this book. Like, I got a lot of information, but I just scratched the surface. I didn't get anything in my head. You can't just read something and, you know, figure it out. They gave me, like, an open book test, too, so I couldn't even, like, you know, of course I'm going to want to look back and cheat, essentially, in the open book test. To come back to my point, you need to do your own research because these people aren't experts. It's kind of helpful. Like, what I would recommend is when you're looking at a specific animal, why don't you ask the PetSmart associate like, hey, do you own a small animal? Do you own a reptile? Like, you know, if you're looking at reptiles, why don't you ask, do you own a reptile? Do you have anybody that knows a lot about reptiles? And they'll probably be more than happy to find you an employee that can help you with that. Or they might just say, sorry, like I, I don't own one myself, but this is what I know. And just take in what they're, the information they tell you, but you honestly want to fact check. Another way to do your own research well is to go on YouTube, Instagram, Google, even go on forums and just find people that are like obsessed with that species of animal. I just got, I got two rats about a year and a half ago and as I got them throughout the process of getting all their stuff and them and figuring everything out, I, uh, I went on rat forums and just found people that were 100% obsessed with the rats and saw what they did. Number two, just because the pet store sells it does not mean it is the correct habitat for an animal. So I'm going to be putting a Tumblr post down below. I'm probably gonna cut to it. I'm gonna be putting a Tumblr post down below of a silly photo set of, um, incorrect an example of an incorrect habitat and an example of a correct habitat habitat i was running into some trouble trying to figure out what photos i could put on my channel without it having a copyright issue or if i'm stealing people's pictures so i just decided to go with the tumblr post because it the sources are in there so just because you go to a large scale corporate pet store and they have a bird cage that's this big does not mean that you should shove two parakeets in there. 
Just because they have it does not mean it's a good place for them. Those hamster wheel, a wheel up here with tubes coming out. So if the hamster went in it and couldn't figure out how to get back in the tube, he is stuck in this wheel forever. Surprisingly, I've seen a lot of people put hamsters in fish tanks with like a lot of bedding and a lot of places to climb and hide and all that stuff. I'm not a hamster expert, but I'm pretty sure that's like the ideal way to keep your hamster. And like we're talking about a big tank. Like, you really have to think about the space and the price of these animals. Our third thing is similar to thing two. The cheapest option is not the best. The cheap option is almost always the small option. And like I said in thing three, where am I? Oh, like I said in three, thing th two, the cheapest option is not always the best one. It is usually the smallest one. And like I said before, it's not good for the animal. You will be dropping at least $200 on the spot when you buy the animal, all of its equipment, all of its food, any toys, accessories, etc. You need to be prepared to spend money on this animal because there is no, like, just cheap animal if you want to take care of it right. Number four, not all animals need friends. Some need to be alone, some need to be in a family. To really have the best environment for your pet, you need to figure out what type of pet you have. For example, hamsters need to be alone. I've seen hamsters that will be living fine with siblings when they're younger, and when they get old enough, they get territorial and get frustrated that someone else is in their territory, and they will eat their sibling. Eat? their sibling. But on another route, rats need to be with friends, family, whatever, because they're social creatures. If you have multiple rats together, you'll see them cuddling, you'll see them wrestling, you'll see them having fun. It's honestly really rewarding. Thing number five, find out what's harmful. There are certain chemicals, whether cleaning or kitchen spray, non-stick spray, whatever you would call it, air freshener, chemicals in food, chemicals, uh, there's certain types of wood that some animals can't eat or breathe or whatever. You just have to find out what are things that your animal can't be around. So those are my five things you need to know before getting a new pet. I'll put a more like abridged version of just the five bullet points down below in the description along with my Twitter and Instagram and the Tumblr post I mentioned earlier in the video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm not an expert on pets or anything. I'm not trying to uh, bash PetSmart at all. I think it's perfectly fine to shop at PetSmart. I just think you need to be careful of what you're buying. Be sure to subscribe down below so you can find out when I make a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.